All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got another pair of big slip joint pliers. These are bigger than 16 inch. I don't know. They're made by Ideal Company. Well, they might be considered 16 inch, I guess. They're a little bigger than the other pair. They're almost 17. I guess they consider this 16 inch, but this company is Ideal. And memory serves me right. These are made in USA, I think. But they're not really bad shape, but they're caked on with something. I can't, maybe it is rust. It is rust, okay. That is rust on there. With a lot of grease and dirt. These, I cannot remember where I got them. I can, I'll have to say pawn shop, but I'm just gonna soak them in some rust remover. And they're the style that has the button rivet, so you can't take these apart. So I'm just gonna have to clean them the best I can. And by the looks of it, you can see the heavy rust. You can see the rust down in there, I think. And a lot of heavy rust down in here. Probably the best thing to do would just uh, clean these the best I can and then just blew them. They're good, they're usable as they are, but over time they'll get worse. There's, you either you've got to stop it and, and clean them up or, you know, repair them, rescue them. I mean, you've got to do something over time, they'll just lock up and they won't be usable. Because this is not something you use every day. Anyways, let me get some rust remover and soak it. Alright guys, took it out of the rust remover. I need to take it outside and rinse it. There's still some rust. It's pretty deep. The problem if you leave that stuff in there too long, it'll start pitting the metal that's not rusting. There is some heavy rust on this. So let me take this out, rinse it, and then uh, come back, a little wire brush, see what we get. All right, took these outside, and now I gotta, oh, I'll show you. If you look, it looks like rust. I don't think it is rust. I think this is some type of sand. That's had a chemical reaction. I think this was used oil field. The I don't know the the product that's in here is gelled with whatever chemical this was used on. The dirt and the sand formed a, I don't know, a material. So every one of these, I don't know how, I guess I'm gonna have to use a Dremel in every one of these to clean these out. Yeah, it's not good. If I didn't, rescue this tool, this probably wouldn't have lasted very long. It's already, I think it's eating the metal in there. I, I know in fracking, uh, there's different chemicals they put in and, and uh, they use the sand, they pack the well. Well, I say that, I don't know for sure exactly how it's done. I've heard guys that I know talk about it. And I just sit there and listen. But there's definitely something, it's not normal rust. It's, it's thick. And I don't want to put this in the rust remover now anymore because it's going to start etching the good metal. 
So I think the best thing to do is just clean this with the wire wheel and the Dremel and see what I can come up with. See what it looks like and see if you guys. It looks like rust, but it's not. It's it's like sticky. It's sticky, like mud. See that? It, it forms like a mud cake. So I do believe this old tool here has seen some oil field work. Or, uh, I know we use a chemical to treat our water for our boilers, and that will do things to metals. But there's dirt and sand in these, and it's made of paste. So, I guess I have to uh, work a little harder to get this one clean. It's a channel lock 460. Anyways, 
but it's stamped ideal. I thought Ideal Tool Company made their own tools. I guess not. Anyways, this thing, I don't know what was in it, but it definitely was in there. And it, it wasn't just rust, it was actually like a, I'm using a piece of sandpaper. It was like a, some type of compound. I'm just gonna rough the surface up a little more. I don't even know what sandpaper I'm using. I don't really care. It's 100 grit. I'm gonna blue these. They're pitted heavily. Somebody really screwed these up. I wanna be able to be able to take bluing, at least salvage these. Man, pitting's bad on this. Man, I don't know if the sandpaper really helps. It definitely can't hurt. These things were already beat up. I thought they were in better shape than what they really were, but I think what really damaged them the most was that chemical, whatever was in it, or on it. Rust right here, or some of that chemical right here. And it might be whatever was on this was having a reaction with the moisture and the rust and forming like a paste. Alright, let me sand some more on this and then uh, we'll come back and clean it and then uh, we'll blue it. Alright, just give these a good cleaning. Or, let's put it this way. The best cleaning I can. And then we'll just blue them. These are no way mint condition I'm not trying to say they are I just want them to where I can use it just a good usable tool is what I hope I get out of this Probably gonna put a swatch of grease down in there under there just because there's spots there where I could not get the rust. So yeah. give them once over several times. Clean the handle while I'm here first. So I don't have to handle it as much. pretty clean. It's probably the best I can expect to get the handles. Let's 
work on the metal again. Find a clean spot. Yeah, it's starting to get less and less now. get to the point where you rub it enough where you don't get anything off on the white cloth and you know you've got pretty clean. Forgot the teeth. Well, let me finish wiping it down and then I'll come back and we'll blue it. All right, Let's see how this will turn out. I, uh, I'm using this super blue and I got some cotton, stole some cotton pads from my wife. And then just gonna blue this. I'm probably gonna have to use the, the uh, paintbrush too, the little paintbrush, cause can't get in all the little grooves and everything. And I still haven't got any Some, I need some of them foam paint brushes and I keep forgetting to get some when I'm in town. All right, that paint brush, it's all right. It works, it works better. Plus that cotton pads, it's it's a waste. There's so much there's so much in that material now that yeah, I'll stick with what I know. to order some more of this bluing material. I like it, works good. Like I say, if you find something you like, use it. Until somebody can prove something that's a little better, I'm a firm believer in use what you like, use what you use, what you you're comfortable with. Somebody always has got the latest and greatest thing. It's usually not uh, what it's billed as. Yeah, right there in that area right there, I ground it with the, die, with the little uh, Dremel die grinder. For some reason, there was something right there that was pitted really bad.
don't know what the chemical was on this that bound with the acid or I meant with the uh, rust mud I don't know what it was I know it was hard to get off even with the heavy I use my big wire wheel on my big grinder and it it had difficulty so I don't know what this stuff was but it was definitely hard and when it got soft with that uh, rust remover it softened it up and made it like a putty which was kind of interesting For those of you new, it's cold bluing. Clean the metal and rough up the surface, whatever you want to do. Brush it on, wipe it on, however you want to put it on. Let it sit, it says for 30 seconds, and then rinse. And then what I do, I'll show you here in a little bit, some 4 out steel wool and shines up. You can see where, see where it's foaming? That's, it's etch, it's actually, I think it's what it's doing is etching the metal. The color is going in the metal. And it looks pretty good. It'll look good. Let me uh, put this aside so I don't spill it. Ball was worthless. All right, let me go rinse this off. Come back, and we'll uh, finish up. All right, rinsed it off. There's a little four-aught steel wool. Now, for those of you who haven't done this before, see how uneven the color is. See how it evens out? See how rough that looks? See it looks like watermarks? see the you see the watermarks on this side this side they're gone all right let me uh, finish wiping this down and then I'll be right back well ladies and gentlemen I thought I was done and if you look down in there there was a, a pocket I thought the metal was flush across here but there wasn't, there was a buildup of that material right here. So I used the Dremel with a uh, grinding wheel on it and cleaned that area up all the way up inside on this side too. So now we've got to re-blue it, which is not a big deal, but still it's irritating that I don't know what what's on this it's it's a mixture of rust and something else oh well i just wanted to show you all right guys let's uh i, I went ahead and blued 
the inside, but when I did, I just blued it again a second time, and actually, I think it turned darker, so maybe that's a plus. That was a good thing. So, I just throw in a coat of wax on, just to help protect. It's not really gonna hurt anything. The jaw, what I did on the teeth, just to show you guys, I didn't show, I used a little wire brush, just like that, on the teeth. I used a brass brush. And seems to, uh, doesn't affect the bluing. I've done this a couple times now with a, with a little brass brush like that. And doesn't take the finish off. It actually blends it pretty good, I think. So that's, I just keep doing that now. Anyways. Throw a little wax on it, help protect, clean a little bit up, any debris or anything that's on it. Just a little extra protection. I thought I was gonna take these to work, but I don't think so. I think I'm gonna keep these at the house. And I looked these up online, 35 to $44. And they're 16.5 and they are 460s. Channel lock 460s, but they're marked. I'll show you. Ideal, which Ideal is an electrical company, or they make electrical components and things like that, and they make tools too. Or let's put it this way: they sell tools. They may contract them out, which I'm thinking that's why this is marked Channel Lock and Ideal, because Channel Lock probably made it for them. for the money. I got two bucks in this thing. I don't care. It's a good use tool. You know, I saved it from uh, the abyss that it was in. It was, it was trash. I don't know what the material was on it, but it was nasty. Here we go, look at that. Present you a channel lock 460. And it's marked Ideal, which Ideal Tools, they sell electrical stuff. But this is 16.5 is what they say. 16 and a half inch and works good it has a little bit of slop right there just a little bit but nothing I can do about that it's not worn on the grooves so that must be from factory and I look back here on the the grooves the the slots there perfect as far as I can tell. They look good. So, only thing I'm gonna do now is drop a, I'm gonna drop a little bit of oil down in there, uh, some 30 weight oil, and just keep it coated. Uh, these won't see a lot of action here at the house. The other pair I got at work, now they'll be, they'll be used. But I, I don't know what the material was in here but I do believe this probably came out oil field because that wasn't normal rust. It wasn't, I don't know what it was that was in there that was causing it to cake up like that, but I don't know if you guys can see, I'll try to point it out. Let's see if we can get a better look. But down in there where the rust was very heavy, it's not pitted like this area is. This is pitted. This is heavily pitted. You can see the pitting in there. You see it. But in the grooves, 
where the rust was very, well, I thought it was rust, turned out to be some type of paste. It was, it, it didn't eat, let's see if I can show it better, maybe this way. It did not eat the channels up. These grooves are not heavily pitted. So that's why I said it wasn't a rust like I would assume rust would be on metal. It, it had a combination. Like I said, I think this was used in the oil field and I think it was something to do with a chemical, be it fracking or some type of mud. Uh, for you guys that don't know, they, they use a mud they call it a mud it's a chemical i don't know how to say it paste some of you guys will have to chip in on that uh you know the bags of mud is kind of like it's not cement i don't I, I don't know how to describe it except it gets nasty when it gets water to it and that's what i'm thinking some of this was doesn't matter i got a tool here for Two dollars, and maybe two fifty, and it's a good usable tool. Functions. I saved or rescued a tool. You know this this was rusted pretty heavily. Over time, I'm sure it would have damaged, and it probably wouldn't have been usable. But now I gave it new life, and. I'm proud to own it. It's mine. I will use it every once in a great while. I use a big wrench like this, and it's usually when I'm dealing with something, like building a trailer or working on a trailer or uh, uh, PVC. At work, it'd be PVC handling some big pipe or some black pipe. Uh, we don't have much stainless, but we do have some stainless pipe out at work. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Tell me what you think. I tried to show the bluing process. And like I said, you can, you can those of you that find these old tools, a wire wheel will do a lot. Just a, just a wire, a Dremel will do a lot. You can do a lot with a Dremel tool. You, you can restore or rescue or whatever you want to call it. I mean, you can't bring it back brand new, but you can have a good functioning usable tool with a little, li very little effort. And with the prices of tools right now and the way things are going, if you find some old tools, old wrenches, even if you don't think you need it now, buy it. Because two years from now, five years from now, you're gonna walk over your toolbox and think, man, I'm glad I bought that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, give me thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, subscribe if you would if you like the video let me know if you don't yeah, let me know maybe I can correct whatever I'm doing y'all have a good day now thanks